Deuteronomy 32 and 41. When I wet my flashing sword and my hands take hold on judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and will repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and captives from the long haired enemy. Shalom, shalom. First of all, giving all praises to the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose proper name is Yahawa. Many of you refer to him as Yahqua, Ahaya. We're not going to dispute, argue over the name. We're all Hebrew Israelites. We're coming together in love. So, with that being said, I would like to talk to you very briefly. I promise not to be long. But I promise to be very, very strong. So what I wanted to talk to you about is this movie 300. You know, um, over the years, you know, you see us Israelites right here telling you, say Esau, he changes the image and paints himself. He rewrites history. He write us out of history and he write himself in the history. The scriptures say that he would think to change times and lords. He's changing everything. This man is attempting to erase all Israelite history, all of our history, and make it continuously appear as if we were nothing. The book of Daniel's chapter 7 verse 25 says, And he shall speak great wars against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He's doing that because a lot of our people don't believe that we are the chosen people of the Most High anymore. You're worn out. You're worn out with your job. You're worn out with being overworked. And you're worn out with these lies and propaganda that you are a victim of. And he shall think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of times. Now, this man, he's, you know, he's painted King James as a so-called white man. He's painted Mary, Queen of Scots, a so-called white woman. He's painted Christ, Yahusha, as a so-called white man. He's told you that all of the disciples, he's, he, he's made an image of the 12 disciples um, sitting down at the Last Supper and he painted everyone so-called white people. And then years later, at th after this is actually being programmed into the minds of our people, he comes back. You'll see his descendants on the street arguing with us Israelites and they'll say, color don't matter why can't we all just get along and if you are naive and simple enough to go for that then you are friggin crazy what the hell you mean color don't matter after you've actually you know embedded this image into the minds of our men women and children for hundreds of years then you come when the most high put the spirit on his people to raise up and say we're the real jews we're the real hebrew israelites the real israelites are the so-called blacks native americans and so-called hispanics of negroid descent then he suddenly says color doesn't matter but to show you that it does matter every time this man makes a movie He's putting the images of the true people in antiquity as so-called white people. But when we go back in antiquity, we know that these people are melanated. Case in point. Now the movie 300. See, they made these so-called white men. Now, where did they come up with this story? 300. How did they come up with the idea for the movie? Most of our people don't know. Most of our people don't care. Most of our people believe, oh, it's just a movie. Taza Doc, why are you so why why are you so serious? It's just a movie. No, it's not just a damn movie. It's not just a damn movie. 
is propaganda and is lies. And this is why the Most High is raising up men like Tazadak, um, Shah, the disciples of Christ, raising up men like Hasha and the ambassadors of Christ, raising up men like General Yohanna um, of ISUPK, raising up men like um, Bishop Nathaniel, and I mean, Priest Daniel, um, Allah, um, the Lions of Israel, it goes on and on and on, GLCC, all of the Israelites out there teaching this truth, the Most High have raised these men up for a reason. Why? To diffuse the lies and so that our people could get right knowledge and truth. Let me hit you with something. This whole concept of this movie 300, and I sit back and I watch this. For years, now I knew what I was looking at. Now, and, and and all these men that I just mentioned, they knew what they was looking at. They knew that these men were um, Israelite men. You know, people has actually said it, but I'm, I'm gonna show you where they get the whole concept from. They got the whole concept of 300 men taking on thousands and thousands of men. They got it from Scripture. Everything that Esau reads in scripture he'll take it he'll put a twist on it and then he'll try and say this is our history then he'll go make a movie out of it so that the people that don't study won't know unless the most high raise up his prophets and his priests and his messengers to bring this message to you like i'm bringing it to you right now so the next time that you go back, I want you to go back and watch this movie 300. And when you watch this movie, I want you to think of it, these men in their true melanated color that they should have been in when they made the movie in the first place. These were melanated men. These were Israelite men. And so anyone know that Israel is located where? What continent is Israel located on? It's located on what they refer to as Africa, right? Khan. Khan? So if Israel is located in what's referred to as Africa today, then when we deal with antiquity, and if you don't know what it is, go and decipher the word. Um, when we deal with antiquity, if Israel is located in what we refer to as Africa today, dealing with antiquity, then what color, what must have the nationality of the people been then and still is today? They had to be so-called black people or a better sense of the word melanated people. Do you understand? Just dealing with antiquity, just common damn sense, not using scriptures or anything. So now, Esau, in 2006, put out a movie called 300. And in the movie, you had Leonidas. You had this Edomite that was leading 300 warriors, you know, that was taking on thousands. And you say, damn, I can 300 men. And they show you how these men was, you know, like well-trained and so on and so forth. That was our people, man. You didn't know what you was looking at. Now, I'm going to show you what you was looking at. And I dare any Edomite to try and disprove what I was saying. Now, I want you to, um, well, you know, I, I'm not going to go through all of the chapters in this video because I want to be short and strong and not too long. But I want you to read the book of um, Judges, the sixth chapter, all the way to the eighth chapter. And you will understand who the real 300 is. The real 300 is. Now, when we look at judges, when we look at this, you know, the story of 300, it comes from judges. But again, many of our people don't even know what the heck they're looking at. They don't even know what the heck they're looking at when they look at this. So I want you to look closely at the different ways um, in which the men were actually drinking the water. 
the imagery that it puts in your mind when you read these chapters. Some of them were putting their faces right down in the water, but there were some that was taking the water up in their hands so that they could actually watch what was actually going on around around him now that's a man see i've been in a battle many times now that's a man that's actually combat ready and he has a true sense he has the true spirit of a warrior some people it's just not instilled into so i want you to keep that in mind so the ones that was actually taking the water in their hands so that they could actually watch what was going on it's very important because the Most High Yahweh told Gideon, who was actually a judge, by the way, at that time, to choose only the men who keep watching while they drink. The rest, the Most High said, you could just send them home. We can't use men like that. Now, that's why, why, why did the Most High said that? See, the Israelites, you know, during this time, they was going against the Lord's statutes and commandments again. So they was in trouble. And this is the reason that you're in trouble today because you're not keeping the Lord's statutes and commandments. You are not obeying Yahweh. So the people of Midian have gained power over the Israelites and they're hurting them. They're killing them. So the Israelites cries out to the Most High Yahweh for help. And the Most High listens to their cry. So the Most High Yahweh tells Gideon to get an army. So what does Gideon do? He Gideon gathers 32,000 fighting men, strong army. But there's an army of 135,000 fighting against Israel. And Yahweh tells Gideon, you have too many men. So I know Gideon's thinking like, well, what you, well hold on, most high. Hold on, Yahweh, what you mean I got too many men? I only got 32,000. They got 135,000. What do you mean I got too many men? Why did the Most High tell him that? It was because if Israel won the war, they might think they won by themselves, but the Most High wanted to show his power. So they might think that they didn't need the Most High's help to win. So the Most High Yahweh says to Gideon, tell all of the men who are afraid to go back home. In other words, all of you that's wearing pink panties, all of you that's in bitch mode, you could go ahead and back home. And that's the same way that we feel about you men out here that don't want to man up. You could go ahead and stay over there. So when Gideon does, what happened? 22,000 of his fighting men go home. So that leaves him only with 10,000 men to fight against 135,000 soldiers. This is where they get the concept from in the movie 300. Understand that. They got it from scripture. Everything that the Most High puts in this Bible, this man, he takes it and he twixes it and he's trying to make it look as if it's his history. But we're going to dispute all of these damn lies. Now watch this, watch this. But listen, Yahweh says, you still have too many men. So he tells Gideon, to have the men to drink at the stream and then to send all of the people who do, who actually put their faces down to drink the water. And I will give you victory with the 300 men who kept watching while they drink. This is Yahweh's promise. So the time comes for the fight. Gideon puts up his 300 men in three groups, just like they did in the movie. Remember they try and separate the men? To fight against the Persians. This is where they got this from. This is our history, man. But Esau, once again, is trying to steal it. And we're not going to let you teach that bull crap to our children anymore, man. So he gives to each man a horn and a jar with a torch inside of it. So when it's about midnight, they all go around the camp of the enemy soldiers. Then, at the same time, they all blow the horns and break the jars and shout. And Yahweh's sword and Gideon's. So when the enemy soldiers wake up, they're confused and they're afraid. And they begin to run. And the Israelites win the battle. Do you understand? That's a true warrior mentality. Gideon's chapter 7, 
I mean, Salakia. Judges chapter 7, verse 7 reads, The Lord said to Gideon, With thee, 300 men who lap, I will deliver the whole army, and I will hand Midian over to you. See, this is the real black history, Hebrew Israel white history, that has been actually whitewashed with a movie called 300, which is really in Gideon's 300, Israel white army. Now go and read the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, all the way up to the eighth chapter. Judges chapter seven, verse one through eight says, Jeroboam, this is Gideon, and his men got up the next morning and camped near the springs of Haran. The Midianites were camped north of them near the hill of Moray in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to hand Midian over to you. Israel might brag. Our own strength has delivered us. Now announce to them, whoever is shaken with fear may turn around and leave Mount Gilead. 22,000 men went home, 10,000 remained. The Lord spoke to Gideon again. There are still too many men. Bring them down to the water and I will thin the ranks some more. When I say this one should go with you, pick him to go. When I say this one shall not go with you, do not take him. So the Most High put a spirit on Gideon. So he brought the men down to the water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, speak those who lap the water as a dog is lapped from those who who kneel to drink. So all the men that kneel down like a damn dog, put their faces to the water, the Most High told Gideon, get them out of here. Because why? They wasn't watching their surrounding area. They wasn't looking out for their brother. You remember in the movie, 300, they was like, you gotta, your shield gotta protect your brother on this side. It's all from this, man. It's all from this. 300 men lap. The rest of them kneel to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men who lap, I will deliver the whole army and I will hand Midian over to you. The rest of the men should go home. The men who were chosen took supplies and trumpets. Gideon sent the men of Israel back to their homes. He kept only 300 men. Now the Midianites were camped down below in the valley. This is where Esau got his movie from 300. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. So the Most High is putting this in his prophets today to bring out the truth. So, you know, share this video, like this video, tell it from the mountain, the Israelites are the real 300. Those are Israelite soldiers that was fighting like that. They were not no damn Edomites. Even though Isaac blessed them by the sword, they were not Edomites. They don't fight with the same spirit that Israelites um, do. Uh, even reflecting back on King David's mighty men. King David mighty men. One man take out 50 men. So that's when you in that right spirit, man. That's when you in the right spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah. You got to be warriors, man. No Israelite man be um, m marching with damn picket signs like Martin Luther Coon. When men in the Bible march, they march in ranks going to war. They put on battle armor and they march to war. Get your mind right, King. What the hell are you doing marching with a picket sign? Ain't no time to sing. It's time to swing. You talking about revolution with picket signs? Malcolm trying to tell you a revolution is a bloody king. You need a revolution of your mind. Complete, constructed change. That's the revolution that you need. Get your mind right. Why do you think I be saying that? I ain't no damn entertainer. I'm not one of these Israelites out here that's rapping, man. I'm real with this, man. So get your minds right, King. So with that, I'm going to bring this to a close. Share this video. Like this video. Now you know who the real 300 is because we're tired of the buffoonery and the Most High is not going to let them pull that garbage over on our people. So Tazer Doc is out. I mean, like the video, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Shalom, Krum Yasha Allah.